Hey guys, what's up? This is Joe again. Welcome back to the next tutorial in a series. Um, this is probably going to be the last one for a little while uh, until I make some, come up with some more ideas to make some new things. So this should at least get you guys started, get you familiar with the SDK. The final thing we're going to do in here is add a button. So you're going to be able to click a button. Uh, it's probably, I think it's going to have some text to you know say something or whatever. Um, and then when you click the button, I'm not really sure what's going to happen yet, but we'll figure that out when we get to it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. I'm going to close out After Effects and not save that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and open up Tutorial CCP from over here. You can double click it. Go down to, I believe, Render. No, we need to go further than that. We need to go to the Effect Main. Sorry, you're going to click Effect Main. And in here, we're taking in some parameters, and then there's this Try Catch uh, functionality that has a switch built into it. And the switch has some cases, okay? So you may or may not know what the heck I'm saying, but that's okay. Basically, this thing is starting up and it's going to the first enumeration. And if you go to tutorial.headers, is that where these are? Oh, that's not where these are. Let's peek the definition and see where these exist. And, oh, this is built into uh, the After Effects header. So this is like built into After Effects, but they have this enumeration and then they have all these different things that After Effects is looking for. So pretty much what's happening is it's going to this first one and it's doing whatever it needs to do in there. Then it's going to the second one and it's doing whatever it needs to do in there. So it's global setup. That's actually here. Um, parameter setup. It's going into these params and it's adding it to the parameter setup, which is here. And then uh, finally gets to the render setting, uh, the render, the render function, which is here, and it does whatever it needs to do in there. So we're going to we're going to need to add in order to have our button. We need to add one more case. So I'm going to click down at the bottom of this break, hit enter. And we're going to call this case pf underscore command underscore user change param. And then you're going to put some uh, colon. And then in this, we're going to need an error, okay? And so the error is going to be a function that runs. It's going to come from a function. And that function is one that doesn't exist yet. We're going to make it. So we're going to call this param changed. That's what I'm calling this function, parentheses, um, with a little semicolon. This uh, function is going to take in some in data. It's going to take in some out data. And it's also going to take in something called pf underscore smart render extra. Okay, and then this has to be inside of parentheses. It's going to be a pointer, so we're going to do a little star, close that, and then it needs to take extra. So you're going to type that in just like that. Uh, we do need. Oh no, that's it. And it's saying it doesn't. It, it's it's confused because it's unidentified. It's an unidentified flying object. And we're gonna go ahead and identify that somewhere. So let's go ahead and go to our my simple game funct eight, and make the function called param changed. So uh, we're right above uh, my simple game function, right below sixteen. So in here, we're gonna make this a function that is static. Um, it's going to take a PFE, capital E, RR. Um, basically, I'm just copying what's down here for now. We're going to need to name the parameter. So the parameter is called param changed. And then open and close that. And then down here, let's add our little braces just to make this thing stop being so angry at us. Okay, cool. It's all fixed. So pretty much I'm just copying what, what I see here. So static, static, P-E-R, uh, P-F-E-R, because it needs to return an error. It's going to be an error function. It needs to return an error. Uh, so what we do actually need to do is return the error. So let's go ahead and do that, return error. And it's like, what the heck is an error? Because we haven't defined it yet. And so down here, if you look, they define their error in this way. So that's how we're going to define ours. So now we have an error and we are returning it. We do need to tell it what data is coming in. And to do that, hmm, we're going to go, we're going to reference this one. So we have this in data and this out data. We want those. This is in param setup. Once I get this together, I'll explain what's happening. Uh, paste that down there. So we have those. So we have the in data, the out data, and we also need to take in down here. We need to take in this PF render extra, smart render extra thing. Come up here to our param changed, hit enter, and paste that in there. But we do need to get rid of this parenthesis. 
So it'll take it in like that. Okay, so what's going on here? We are creating a function called param changed. The way Adobe reads functions, they they read them through these PF errors. So and all these PF errors always return an error. So so far we have we called it static. It's a PF error. The name of the function is called param changed. It's going to take in some variables, which I'll explain those in a second, and it's going to return an error. Now what the heck is the error? That's where we came down here and defined. Hey, we have an error, and it's just going to be whatever this this thing is here none and if you don't know what this is you can right click go to peak definition and hopefully you'll get some information from reading these notes here if not you could type it into the guide and probably get some more information maybe not we don't know um, the parameters is taken in is in data it's pointed to the in data which is when we are rendering it's saying hey there's some kind of information that needs to come in because we're going to make a change. So it's taking that data, which is pretty much a 1920 by 1080 composition, and reading it, and then it's sending it to an out data. In our case, the out data sends it to the rendered window. We can do something called a PF uh, effect world, which is a different place to render to, and that kind of saves some, some CPU space, but that's a little further down the road. That's a different tutorial for a different day. But for now, we're going to render it right to the render area. And then um, the final thing is it takes in a smart render, which is an extra parameter created by the smart render function. Uh, basically, this is saying when we click the button, it's looking for an action. So it's like when we click it, Adobe knows that the button's been clicked. So that's pretty much what's going on there. So what do we want to happen in this function? So when we click this button, pretty much all I'm going to do is make the word uh, hello pop up down here in the output. That's just to say we clicked it. You can make the function do whatever you want once you know that the button works. Um, in order to make that, let's go ahead and type the code in, and this may or may not show up for you guys. You're going to type in capital O output uh, debug string, output output debug string, open close parenthesis, add a semicolon at the end of that, and we're going to type in quotations, double quotes, hello. So whenever I click this button, it's going to pop up down here. Now, if you're getting the red squiggly line here, you need to go to tutorial.h and add in include windows header so include this it should probably be included with the the sdk but if it's not add you could just add it in right here it's fine um, and that should work for you then so now uh oh we need to, we need to make the button because we haven't made the button so far all we've done is just made this function for it to work um, so let's go ahead and make a button now so if we go back to the tutorial header file go down and we have our gain value, we have the color value, we have the checkbox value. Let's add a button. So we're going to call this tutorial underscore button and a comma. Don't forget your commas. And then down here we have the disk ID. Is um, The first one that comes in is gain. The next one is the color. The next one is the checkbox. And then finally we're going to have the button. Uh, all caps. Button. Button underscore disk underscore ID comma. Cool. That's good. Now we need to go to our other strings, tutorial strings header dot uh, file, and we need to give this button a name. So we're going to call it string ID underscore uh, button underscore param underscore name. Cool. And then, um, and all I'm doing when I'm, I'm making these up as we go, and I'm just following the structure pattern that Adobe has already set. So that's probably the easiest and most efficient way to go about it. Uh, go to tutorial strings here and actually if we go sorry we go back to other tutorial strings we can just copy this because we're about to write it again come over here go underneath our awesome checkbox put that in there hit comma come over here and we're going to call this button uh just click me it's fine yeah it's fine it's called the click me button so that's what it's going to be called then we come into our C plus, back to our regular C++. I'm going to hit Control shift s to save all these, to get rid of those little stars, just to make sure everything's saved in case we crash. Um, and we're going to come up to Global Setup. And in here, again, we're going to remember we made our float. Well, the float slider was there, the color picker was there, and then we made the checkbox. So let's make another one. And in order to make another one, we always have to clear the definition, uh, the structure def first. So... <clears throat> I just grabbed that uh, AEFX clear structure def, went in there. Once we clear the structure, we start adding in the UI elements for the button. And so the way we're going to do that is hit capital PF underscore add. And you might be saying, Joe, where are you getting this information from? I'm literally just going off of other ones that already exist. Okay, so I type out a few letters, see what starts coming up, and I start reading through these things. And that's how I figure out what needs to go. 
Um, and in this case, we're looking to make a button, so we're going to click the one that says button. We need open, close parentheses, and a semicolon. Hit enter a couple times. Um, tab a few times, and we're going to make a... Sh so, oh, so what variables do we need? Uh, what, what parameters do we need for this? So the first thing we need is a parameter name. So we're going to make a string, and we've already named this string um, str uh, id underscore button param name by the way that showed up for me it might not show up for you guys because when I wrote it here I misspelled it I think there was an extra D in this but I fixed that outside of this uh, tutorial sorry about that and so anyway that button parameter name is uh, gonna come up <clears throat> and so you add that the next thing it's looking for is a button name so what is the button gonna be called uh, I'm not sure where this text shows up so I'm just gonna call it test text for now and we'll see where that that comes up and we can fix it later um, PUI flags we don't have any uh, I think those are user flags how can I look at that peak definition of this peak definition of this and nothing comes up cool 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 let's peek the definition again PUI I'm not really seeing anything uh, that really tells me what that is oh here UI flags oh user oh, we just need a, a flag that's a flag for the user interface um, we're not gonna need any of those so we're just gonna make it zero or null and then we do need a parameter flag okay so for the parameters we're gonna need to call this thing called pf underscore uh, just type in supervise and it should come up yeah pf param flag supervise and so what this does if we look at it it says call me with pf command user change param remember in the beginning of this in our render function not in a render sorry in um, our effect main function we called this case pf command user change parameter so whatever adobe is doing on the back end when this is called it's looking for user interface objects that have this flag attached with it the supervised flag so if you put this flag in any of these it's going to look at these uh, parameters here and in this case we only have it added for the button so it's saying when that's clicked we need to look for this flag and so it'll find it on the button so that's how it knows the button is clicked um, the final thing that we're going to need for this button is um, param flags id so we do need an id which we already made remember we made it in the tutorial h right here the id is uh, button disk id so we're going to copy that come over here hit paste uh, tab if you, oh my gosh tab a few times and just cleaning this up a little bit oh we have an extra parenthesis and a semicolon we don't want that okay um, now we should be good to go we don't have any squiggly lines it looks like it's it's all working I believe at this point we should have a button showing up in the UI and we should be able to click it and we should get hello written down here in the output um, let's see if that's the case so I hit go ahead and play this uh, debug it it'll go save everything oh my gosh there are errors okay so no we don't want to run this yet string ID button param name is undeclared so this is oh again I have that D in there so we need to make sure that that doesn't exist uh, by the way you can click on these here and it'll pop up in Google it might give you a little bit more information about what you're looking at if you can't figure out just from the, the text it gives uh, I have had to use that a lot to figure this out so just so you know you can click that and it's pretty helpful uh, so let's run this again and I'm going to open up this tutorial project, uh, go to whatever that is, and then add my sick plugin to it. And look, now we have a click box, a click button, and it highlights when you hover over it. And if we check it, um, let me minimize this a little bit. We should see, uh, sorry, if I go to Microsoft uh, Visual Studio, I have, I'm on my output window here. So let's keep an eye down, down in this area down here. In After Effects. We're going to be looking right in here. When I check this box, we should get hello popping up. And we do. So we know the button works. So now we can make some functionality for this button, just like you would any other program. So if you're familiar with Python or C++, you wouldn't be able to type in Python. You have to use C++, but it's the same concept. So um, you can go to uh, Solution Explorer. Go to uh, per, where does that live? Oh, it's in our, we made the we made a function for it. It's called params. Uh, not, Cha param changed so you go to this 
you could type whatever functionality you want to in here and that's what's going to happen when you hit that button and so uh yeah that's how you add another ui element you make it work that's using some flags um the flags you know those you probably you probably won't learn how these flags work unless you like go looking for the information yeah cool i think that's going to be the end of this tutorial for now um I'll see what I can come up with for the next one, and we'll probably keep adding on to this, or maybe we'll make a new plugin. I don't know. But right now, you have a plugin that you can change the gain. You can pick a color. Let's go with this pink or whatever. Hit checkbox, and it turns it pink, and then you can make this thing say hello in a space where nobody will ever see it but you. So there you go. I uh, hope you learned a lot from all this stuff. I will try to come back soon enough with some more tutorials, but that will be the end of this series for now. Uh, see you guys later.